Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's career chat. I'm Krista Harmon. I am one of the career readiness consultants with the Kent Intermediate School District, and I'm so glad to have you here. And I'm really thrilled to have Kirsten Schulte, a project manager from West Michigan Works. Welcome, Kirsten. Hi, thanks for having me here. So this series that we're in right now, we're trying to help young people learn about different jobs in business, and there's such a wide variety. And so just to get us started, um, in just a really brief what is a project manager? A project manager is someone who oversees a single project or a series of projects in an organization. So you could be working on one large event or you could be working with multiple different clients, helping them with their big project. Um, it's a pretty cool job because if you like to balance things and always be busy, it's a good job to have. Great, I look forward to certainly digging into more detail. When you think back to high school ages, Kirsten, did you wanna grow up to be a project manager? What were you thinking back no. in high school? <laughs> Absolutely not. No, um, when I was about like 16 or 17, I really wanted to go into teaching. I wanted to be a elementary school teacher. Um, but once I started to talk a bit more to my own career counselors and when I really started to dig into the things that I was really strong at doing, teaching was not that thing. So that that definitely was not the path that I took. And so in high school, you're thinking teaching and was there someone that you knew that was a teacher? Or what got you thinking that in the first place anyway? I love kids. kids. I've, I, I've always been drawn to um, being a camp counselor and I, I did a lot of babysitting and I really just related strongly with younger children. And I loved being able to teach kids and all of the different extracurricular activities that I would do in school. Um, for example, I would give private music lessons to elementary school students when I was in high school. And I really enjoyed doing something like that. Um, but once I started to really get down to the other things that I was passionate about, I was more passionate about those other things than I would have been about teaching. So spell some of that out for us and then let us know kind of then how you made those decisions for that next level of education and after high school. So one of my most favorite extracurricular activities in high school was cheerleading. I was a competitive cheerleader and I cheered sideline as one of my sports that I did. And I was also involved in a lot of different programs like youth and government and um, peer mediation. So I, I really kept myself involved when I was in school. And I think being involved in a lot of different programs like that really helped guided me to what I wanted to do. And what I really enjoyed doing was helping people to promote what they were doing. Like I would, I get very passionate about other people's projects. So once I started talking with my career coaches and my counselors, they guided me towards public relations and advertising. And in high school, I'm like, what in the world is public relations? I had no idea what that was. But once I started to look more into it, I'm like, yeah, I, I think that's something I could definitely do because the field of PR, public relations, it, it really provides you with a lot of different opportunities in business. You can do things from um, creating press conferences or doing things with politicians or doing event planning. And so once I got through college and I got my bachelor's in public relations, I really found my niche in event planning. That is really where I found my strong passion to be because I love being able to see the idea come to life and see it go to the end and really making people happy with what you create. When you look back on your high school ages, do you think you were already doing some event planning when you think back? Were you helping plan any parties for anybody or with your family at the holidays? Like tell us some of those early clues, because I love young people to start to self-assess with some of the things that they're already doing, which are actually clues to making some of these. Absolutely. And it's funny you bring that up because I would always love helping my mom plan like our family get togethers or, you know, like summer barbecues or me and my friends from high school, like we would plan each other's birthday parties and we would do themes around them. So yeah, event planning was definitely something that I was already doing. Um, 
at a very young age, but now that I've grown, I can do it at a bigger scale. Yeah, that's what I want young people to know. Is sometimes the things that you already love, you can actually pay for. There's jobs out there. So to continue exploring to find it, right? I love it. Yeah. So you decided to get PR degree. Did you do anything in college that to help you really confirm that? Had you done some, any job shadows or informational interviews with people who were in it? Tell us about that. Yeah, absolutely. And part of a lot of college curriculum, they will require you to do some types of internships or job shadowing for myself. I did find an internship with the Grand Valley um, GVSU's Women's Center and I was their publicity chair. So I would handle all of their newsletters, their press releases, any type of small event planning that they had going on and even some of their larger productions I would assist in. So I did that internship for about oh, two and a half years. So even longer than what I was asked to do because I just enjoyed doing it so much. Um, but the great thing about college when you're looking at PR, they kind of give you a taste of everything that goes into it. So you take classes that are about journalism, you take classes that are about communication writing, some are definitely a bit more dry and not as fun as what an event planner might do, but there are event planning classes too. That's so great. And I love that you really kind of describe some of the things you got to do as an intern. And we were talking about this the other day, like that's how you start to develop your skills, right? It's not what you're learning in the class. So just an encouragement to young people to get involved and because you're going to learn about yourself and develop skills. So you get this, um, you have this great internship, you graduate. How did you get your first job and what was that? Well, some of you might remember the Great Recession. Maybe your parents talk about it. Um, if not, ask them about it because I was one of the people that graduated at the very beginning of the Great Recession. So there were no jobs for us when we graduated. So it was very tough. It was pretty tough. I fortunately was able to connect with one of my professors from Grand Valley. He had taken a position at um, United Way of West Michigan, and he was able to get me a temporary position while I found something. And it was something that I definitely never even considered doing. Because when you, when you graduate, you kind of look forward to doing that job that you studied and you worked so hard to prepare yourself for. But it taught me that you had to be pretty flexible, especially during that time. But you know, I was with them for about four months until I finally got my first real job at a public relations agency in Grand Rapids called Seaforth and Associates. And I was working in media relations. So I wanna just pull out that fact that you connected with your professor and I'm trying to help the young people understand that's networking. And that's yes. a lot of how people get jobs, you guys. 65% of people get jobs through networking. So it's really important that you're always, you know, making um, good choices and being on time and having good attitude because you never know who's going to help you. So you did this four-month uh, job and kind of fill that gap. And I'm sure you were still learning skills. And you end up in one of the biggest PR firms in Grand Rapids, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, right? Yes. Uh, so what was it like being a new professional? I mean, did you feel like, man... I'm not sure I really know how to do this. Did they show you how to do the actual day-to-day? -day? What was that first thing like as a new young professional? It was exactly like that. I remember my first day very well. I showed up and I just sat down at my very own desk and I'm like, well, what do I do now? And there was, of course, there's a lot of like training that you get on just how to work the phone system or how you log into the computer. I mean, very simple stuff, but it, it really all started when my boss, his name is Michael, he approached me about assisting with this really cool initiative that they were getting ready to start. And some of you may even recognize that this initiative was called Art Prize. So I was part of the very first Art Prize media relations team. And during this time, you know, he saw me as someone who was younger, who maybe not didn't know much about how to do press conferences and how to get the media involved, but social media was becoming a very big thing for businesses at that time, because before only people were using Facebook. That was it. They were only using Facebook and it was for personal use. It wasn't businesses and there was no Instagram. There was no TikTok. There was no Snapchat. It was just Facebook and Twitter. 
So my job became doing social media for the first art prize. Very cool. What a fantastic first job for you. And I want young people to really hear that too, that some things you're thinking about now, you guys may not even exist yet. The, the, maybe it's something that the job you'll end up doing doesn't even exist yet. Just like for Kirsten, yeah. she didn't know she'd be in social media when she was in college. That didn't exist yet. So just to not get so caught up on what the job title is going to be, but really focus on the skill set you're developing. That's what I really want to encourage you. So how long did you stay at Seaford then and get to work on these kind of projects? I was at Seaford for about a year. Um, again, it was still kind of like in the middle of the recession. So it was a bit tough for a lot of our clients. Um, so I, what, myself and a number of other administrative individuals, we were laid off and it was pretty tough because we had just come down from this really big project like Art Prize, and you know, you felt really secure. But looking back at it now, it really gave me a competitive advantage for when I made my next move. And I actually became the director of marketing for Eastern Floral and the Goey Center. And that's how I really started to get into the event planning world because Eastern and the Goey Center focus a lot on events. And I was with them for a number of years and we did a lot of really cool stuff together. How did you find that job? Can you, was it networking again or did you see it on a internet job posting? How did you get that job with Eastern Floral? Just to help kids understand how that kind of transitions when here you are all of a sudden unemployed, you didn't expect to be. Well, at that time it was still pretty tough to find something being someone who was right out of college, who had only had maybe a year and a half of experience underneath my belt. There really, it was very, very tough. I would say I went about six months without having a position so I continued to just work as a bartender um, at a local restaurant until I could actually find something. And I had met the owners of Eastern Floral when I was working at Seafirth because they were helping them launch a new project that they were working on. So we had known each other just in passing, um, but it definitely gave me a leg up when I did see their posting on, I think I believe it was Indeed. Yeah, I think it was Indeed, which is a job posting site, and they needed somebody who was newer in marketing, and marketing wasn't necessarily public relations, but they do have a lot of similarities, and I said, you know, I'm just going to throw my hat in, and I'll just see where it takes me, and we went through three different interviews together, and I did land that one, but it did help that I knew who they were, and they had known of some of the work that I had done before. And I also love that you didn't get caught up on only applying for public relations jobs that were titled that way, that you did throw your hat into something that you recognize you had some skills for from your experience. That's great. So you're working at Eastern Floral and now um, you're working at West Michigan Works. And I've really, I've been really thrilled to have the students learn about, we had someone from the right place. We had someone from Start Garden because these are some organization in Grand Rapids that really serve our business community. So I'm really thrilled. That was one reason I reached out to you. Help them understand what West Michigan Works is, and then we could talk more about your role. Sure. So work, um, West Michigan Works is a local workforce development agency. The department that I work in is business solutions. So we do a lot of work with area businesses, helping them find different training opportunities or helping them with um, filling some of their jobs that they have available for staffing, um, especially during COVID and a lot of the shutdowns, we were really helping them to navigate how to get business loans and how to, uh, how to assist their own staff in navigating COVID and assisting them with protocols. So my division focuses a lot on assisting businesses. Now we do have another division, which would be more of the talent side and we call that talent solutions and those are for individuals that are job seeking so they can come in and do some resume workshops um, there's different types of courses that are available we work with individuals who are returning to michigan we work with individuals who are returning citizens maybe they've been incarcerated and we can assist them in getting positions at local companies that have programs available. We do a lot with apprenticeships, anything where we are able to bring work to Michigan, West Michigan specifically, or how we can get talent to West Michigan. That's what we focus on. Yeah, I think that's great for young people to understand that there's actual organizations that serve businesses, just like the right place you guys, how we were talking about with them, um, and even Start Garden, helping people start businesses. 
that when you want to be in the in the world of business, you can actually be serving business people even versus having your own business, which some of you may want to do. And that's great. But I just want to help you understand the variety. So you're a project manager now. Did you start as a project manager with Michigan Works, West Michigan Works? I did, yes. And this was another instance of networking. Um, a colleague of mine and I, we have known each other for the last 15 years. And she brought this opportunity to me and she said, hey, we're looking for this person. I don't know if you'd be interested. And after looking it over, I had decided, you know, my 10 years that I was with Eastern Floral, it was time for that to come to an end. I was ready to make a transition into something different. And I took a leap. And actually, I had been looking at two different jobs at this time. It was between West Michigan Works and Kids Food Basket. And I ultimately took the job with West Michigan Works. So help, that, that's nice that you had some choices too. And that sometimes yeah. you just know when you're ready for a move, you know? That's awesome that you, you took advantage of that. So help your people understand maybe what a typical day is. I know there's not a typical day, but what, what does a project manager do? Give us some more nuts and bolts of that. And maybe even focus on some of those skill sets that you think makes a good project manager. Sure. So within my role at West Michigan Works, the project that I focus on solely is my career quest. Some of you might be familiar with this event. We did just host it virtually for the first time um, a couple of weeks ago. In the past, my career quest has drawn up to 10,000 students to DeVos Place to really have a very cool hands-on experience with some of our employers that we work with and focus on occupations that are real in West Michigan. So doing this virtually for the first time was definitely a new experience for us. So no, there is no day that looked normal for the last year for myself. But when, when you do have that quote unquote normal day, a lot of it goes from um, looking at what you're planning, how, what do we need to get done? Who do I need to talk to? Who can assist us with getting this part done? It's a lot of hurting is what I call it. It's hurting everybody, talking to a lot of different people on the outside to help, help them assist you. But ultimately, you're working to assist them with a long-term goal of finding new talent that's going to come and work for them. So you need to have skills in organization, time management, and just being re ready to be flexible because there are definitely challenges and changes that come at the drop of a dime in project management. Yeah, when COVID hit, you're probably like, how am I going to pivot this giant yeah. um, event that's been held in person? So that was probably such a big challenge, right? Absolutely. You know, we were, we were at the very tail end of planning my career quest um, 2020 when everything shut down and we had to make that decision even before everything shut down that we were deciding that we couldn't safely hold it because we didn't know what COVID was to bring. And even when we went through the spring and the summer of 2020, trying to figure out what in the world are we gonna do for 2021, we looked at a lot of different options as to how can we still bring this experience to everyone and, and in our region to all of these different students and still try to have something that looks similar to what they may have seen in the past. Yeah, so that problem solving and like say being flexible and taking a deep breath. Those are all parts of, of that job for you at the time. And um, I know you did, I was part of your event. So, and I know it went off, uh, seemed went off really well. So good for you. Um, sometimes students like to know really what your favorite thing about your job is, Kirsten, and what's the thing that maybe causes you stress or that you don't like so much? <laughs> the favorite thing that I have about my job. I really enjoy taking something like my career class that was already existing because it had been in existence before I came to um, West Michigan Works. They had been hosting this since 2015, but seeing how can I change it for the better? What can I do to make this already awesome event even, even better? So I really like to dive into it, really figure it out, and then see what can we do to make it a better experience for all of you. And then from there, being able to map it all out and then seeing that finished product. The day that you see the finished product is the most satisfying day. It's when you're like, oh, I really did this. I was able to pull this off because there are definitely some times where you're thinking, I am not going to be able to do this. <laughs> but you have to. You have to get it done. And it all falls into place. It really does. Um, 
the most stressful thing about my job? <sighs> That's a really good question. You know, you know, you get so excited about the day leading up to an event. I would say probably the seven days before the event are the most stressful because those are the days where you have thought, oh my gosh, we forgot about this. Oh my goodness, what if this happens? Oh, what if this happens? What if this happens? All of the what ifs start to come into mind. And my mantra for project management is planning for the worst and hoping for the best. Because when you deal with large events or large projects, there are things that are going to come in your way. And sometimes you just have to take them all on with grace and let it roll off your back if something bad happens. Yeah, and I want to point out too that when you're having, you know, sometimes things don't go exactly how you want, you're not doing this all alone, right? Tell us about teamwork and why, when they're practicing teamwork in high school, why that applies then when you're in a professional environment. Something as large as my career quest or even smaller projects, you have to rely on team members to assist you. And some of the greatest ideas come from collaborating with the people that you work with. I appreciate my team to no end and I never take credit for anything solely because nothing I do is without their assistance. I mean, I've got people that work with each different industry for healthcare and IT and construction and manufacturing and agribusiness. I rely on them to help me bring employers to this. I work with people like Krista at Kent ISD to help bring students and teachers to this event. I work with other businesses to really be our, our champions, our cheerleaders to help sell the event. So I've got a really big team that backs me up and I wouldn't be able to do my job without them. Yeah, that's so great to point that out and I appreciate that so much. Um, these are high school students who you know, are looking at starting to maybe develop some skills to get to where they wanna go, um, or at least keep exploring. Does West Michigan Works ever allow job shadows? Um, do you do internships with college age? Tell us what you do to help with students understanding what you guys are doing. At West Michigan Works, we definitely do internships with college age students, um, job shadowing. Since my time there, I have not experienced anybody doing any job shadowing, but I definitely don't think it's something we would turn down because we want you to know about what you want to like in the future. And if you think project management is something you'd be interested in, um, it might not be like in the office right now because I'm still working from home, but there's always the opportunity for us to chat too. Yeah, I think those information interviews are are very valuable, and I'm I model I'm modeling this to you guys right now, students. This is what an information interview is, and it's part of your career explorers, um, you know, tasks. But it's just conversation. It's getting information from our role models about how they got into it and what they like about it. So we have five minutes left. Um, if the students, if you have any questions for Kirsten, be sure to put those in the chat. Um, I guess I'm wondering as you look ahead, and we're assuming you're you're you, we know you love your current job, but as you look ahead, you know, there's different skills you've developed and you're probably still learning about yourself. Is there something that you kind of strive for at that next level or do you see yourself being here for a long time? Well, you know, I, for me, when I came into this position, I, I came in with the goal of launching a very successful in-person My Career Quest. Because I did not get to do a successful in-person My Career Quest the last two years that I've been here, it is still my goal to see that happen. I want to see that go through. I want to be able to do that. So right now, that is my immediate goal. Long term, I still see myself doing event planning, whether it be for political organizations, be it for um, the state of Michigan, maybe other events for West Michigan Works, or someday maybe even have my own corporate event planning business. I know that that's where my passion lies. I love that you just spelled out all that variety of ways that your current skill sets can take you. And that's, that's really what we're aiming for young people is to get enough in your tool belt that you can be very marketable in a variety of things. Um, Neil, I would be really interested to know what you would tell your past self while you were in high school. Oh, that's a great question. What I tell my past self, doing a great job. 
I think we question ourselves a lot when we're young and we may not feel like we have all the answers, but I think that that's what I would tell myself is that you're doing a great jerk and just keep pushing forward. Yeah, learning about yourself and, you know, having experiences where you can develop skills and meet people. Those are the things you guys should be thinking about while you're in high school, because it's really going to give you some experiences that will help you fine tune what you like and what you don't like. Um, that's so important. Um, I want you to be thinking about a final word of wisdom, Kirsten. I'm going to show the students um, a resource um, for them to do a little more research around project management. So bear with me. Um, I know young people who've been doing a few career chats. I've shared onetonline.org, but I really want to point that out again as a tool uh, for you to find out how much money do project managers make, what kind of skills, what kind of tasks. In fact, um, ONET even talks about the technology. Um, oh, this is really big, but um, I did plug in project management into ONET and they're still gathering some data on it, but you can see just at the bottom here that there's you know, some tasks that they, they did spell out, but you can learn about credentials and wages and if this is a growing field, so all sorts of great career information. Um, the technology that they talk about is a big part of project management, right, Kirsten? Project management software, I see they're making a few suggestions. Tell us about that. This might have been changed in your career since you graduated from college, I would think. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now, but definitely technology is a huge part of my position. I'm looking at some of the enterprise software. Recall a little bit, but I probably should a little bit more. Um, but definitely knowing all of your different Google suites are Im incredibly important. Knowing how to use Zoom like a pro, that's incredibly important. No, really the video creation and editing software, that is huge. I made a ton of videos this past year on how to train people for my career class from employers to our educators to students. And knowing how to edit videos is, is incredibly important. And knowing how to upload them to YouTube too is important. If none of you have done that yet, just try it. Because um, if you go into a field like business, sometimes you'll be asked to do that even just for smaller projects if you're not in project management. I know some human resources people who have to make videos, especially now being virtual. I just learned two weeks ago how to upload these to YouTube myself. We've had um, one of my colleagues been doing it this whole year. And she had to be out of the office for two weeks. So I learned, and it was awesome. I'm like, yeah, I have a new skill set for my resume. <laughs> so I had to laugh. Um, at the very bit, hope this is okay. You had said originally that it was okay to share your um, email. Hopefully that's still okay. I didn't ask you again today. Absolutely. Um, if, yeah, you guys, Kirsten's offered up her, her email to you. If you think, man, I'd like to ask some more questions. This seems like a job that I might really like. Uh, this is her email. So check that out. I'll just keep it there for a few seconds here. And of course, you can always follow up with me with an email and I'll send it on to you. That's Kay Schulte at West Michigan Works. And then of course, my name is Krista Harmon at kentisd.org. And I'm so glad that you guys got to be here today. So thank you so much for sharing. What's that final word of wisdom you'd like to share with these young people, Kirsten, as they really explore these next couple of years? These are two that have been spoken from my mentors, um, I think that they're really valuable questions. Shoot. I so the, many the, times. The connection got really bad. You'll have to repeat your word of wisdom. Oh, sorry. Better now? Yep. Okay, cool. There are no stupid questions. I can't tell you the number of times that I have gone into meetings with stakeholders or board meetings and there are younger people in the room who will always start their comment by saying this might be a stupid question. There are no stupid questions. It is worse for you to not ask a question because I think a lot of people are very afraid to speak up when they're younger and don't be afraid. We want to hear from you and it makes you stand out. And when you're in a big room full of people who have been working longer than you and you wanna ask a question, just ask. Because somebody else in that room who is maybe 10, 15, 20 years older than you, they might be thinking the exact same thing and might be afraid to say it. So don't be afraid to ask questions. And my second most important piece of advice to you is embrace change. 
change will always come with careers, even if you are in the same type of career pathway for your entire career life, there will always be change. You might get a new boss. You might have your favorite coworker leave. Maybe you get a new addition to the building. Those are all changes that you can manage, but they will come. So change is not a bad thing. Change is a good thing. And I have gone through a lot of different transformations in my career life. I've been a working professional for 15 years now post-college and I've experienced so much change, but it just helps you to grow. I think that's a great word of wisdom, Kirsten. So thank you so, so much for making time to be with us today and students uh, show her some love there through the chat. Thank you, uh, Kirsten. I really appreciate you sharing us uh, with, with us today. It's been great. Thank you guys so much. And again, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Happy to always chat. That's great. All right. I'll let everybody go. I'll just stay on for a few minutes if anyone had questions for me. But Kirsten, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a wonderful day, guys.